Well, hello everyone. My name is John Paul. I'm AAA Northeast car doctor, and I'll be perfectly honest. I'm not a huge motorsports fan, uh, but when you have the opportunity to talk about the 24 hours of Le Mans with Ed Lowe, the uh, senior vice president of content at Motor Trend, you take up with the opportunity and go with it. And Ed, before we get going, one question I have to ask. 24 hours of Le Mans or 24 hours of Le Mans? Le Mans. If you're, if you're fancy, the French uh, pronunciation means the, you don't really pronounce the S, so it is Le Mans. Le Mans. It's not Le Mans. <laughs> it's, it's, not like that, it's not like that questionable Pontiac. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's, not, it's, it's not the one that everybody knows in this country. It is Le Mans. Le Mans. Perfect. So we got that cleared up. Um, you know, this is a, this is a race that's uh, been around for a long time. It's a little bit different than most races. Can you explain kind of how that is? I mean, usually most races, it's uh, whoever got there first. Right. Uh, yes, this is a this is a very old, very historic uh, race. One of the one of the oldest still running. It's also one of the most prestigious. Uh, the 24 Hours of Le Mans is very different from, I think, any of the racing that um, I think Americans are, are sort of familiar with. Uh, first of all, it is not at a traditional uh, racetrack. It is out in uh, on a on a country, essentially a country road. Uh, they call it the Circuit uh, uh, Le Sarth, but it is um, it is basically a, a road that during the rest of the year people just drive on. Uh, like no problem. Uh, it's roughly, you know, nine miles uh, in, the, in the French countryside. It, so it's huge. Laps are, are quite long. Um, and then the other big difference is that it's sort of a, a four races, multiple races in one because for, uh, this year, four different classes are all racing at the same time. So they call them uh, LM, Le Mans Prototype uh, 1, Le Mans Prototype 2, and then there's a couple of other uh, GT classes and the cars are all different and they run at different speeds. Uh, there's a considerable speed gap between uh, the top performers. So it's very exciting. It's also very dangerous because you can get one of the LMP, the top step cars coming up from behind a slower car and there's some passing that has to happen. Uh, and then the third element really is that it's a 24 hour endurance race. So this is fundamentally uh, a, a test of both machine and and the teams, the, the 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 men and women behind the wheels, because you're racing one full, you know, round the clock, and um, you know you go from night from day to night, and then night to day, and so there's sunrise to deal with, there's weather. It's it's very extreme. Is there anything in the United States that compares to what I know? We have the 24 hour Rolex, uh, which a friend of mine races in. Uh, but is there anything that's comparative to the 24 hour Le Mans? Totally. The, the Rolex 24 is, is probably the closest comparison. And, you know, we do actually have a fair amount of endurance racing in this country. The, you know, the six hours of Sebring, the, you know, Sebring is, it does a bunch of different races. Um, and then we actually have one on the West Coast called the, uh, there's a 25 hours of Thunder Hill. And apparently they, they claim they're the longest, uh, the hardest core endurance race because they win one more hour than most people go. It's 25 hours, which is uh, pretty silly. But uh, it, is, it is hard. Any of these races that go this long, are they're very dangerous. They're, they're, you end up with fatigue becomes a huge factor. Um, and then, of course, the wear and tear on the vehicle. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's also what makes it uh, quite exciting. Yeah, I bet. And um, like you said, this takes place on roadways. This takes place on essentially country roads at some point. Um, how is it, I mean, we're, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. How, how, is it, how is it going to be different this year? Right. So um, it is very different. So first of all, Le Mans normally is run in, um, in June. It's like the early summer, early mid, uh, mid-summer uh, in France. So they had to postpone, like a lot of professional sports, they, the options were either canceled outright or sort of work with what's going on in the world and, and COVID-19 and figure out a, out a way to execute it. So they actually did a virtual Le Mans race that was sort of close to the original start of this race. And then they postponed the real thing uh, to this coming weekend um, so that they can, you know, actually run it. Uh, and that creates an interesting problem because it's going to be a, basically a different season. So 
summer, they always say it rains at Le Mans. And uh, there's some expectation that maybe it'll have more weather because they're running it in September. Uh, also, the nights might be a little longer because we're, we're getting into the yeah. fall season, which makes it a little, a little more challenging. And then, of course, because of COVID-19, uh, no spectators. So there won't be anybody in the, in the stands. Um, that's, that's a huge difference. Uh, but I think a lot of motorsports have adjusted to it. And then the, big, the other big thing is they have, a, they have a new qualifying program called Hyperpole which is supposed to be very exciting. Uh, but, uh, so we'll is, is it going to be like some professional sports where we've seen cutouts of uh, spectators? Uh? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. The, the, uh, the circuit, again, is so big, and the stands are clustered at the start-finish line yeah. and then at different points around the track. But I think trying to just put – it would be, it would be quite a, uh, an ordeal to put in cutouts into the, the, the stands. That, yeah. you know, the racers only see, like, you know, in a flash. Yeah. Now, um, you know, we look at, we look at racing and, and people that have been either involved in racing or following racing for a long time, you know, there's old time names that everybody's, you know, familiar with um, on all kinds of different racing circuits. Um, is there a f American team favorite going into the, the race this year? There is an American driver uh, favorite, uh, you know, that the America's favorite son, so you might say, although his name is, in, is, is, is definitely not the standard American. It's like Gustavo Menendez, and uh, he's actually a prior winner. He won in 2016 in the LMP2 class, uh, but this year he's racing for the Rebellion racing team in the top step, the LMP1 class. He's actually a Los Angeles native, uh, 25 year old kid, uh, super, super bright spot in endurance racing. He's raced at Le Mans a number of times. He actually, I think, was a class champion. Um, look forward to him, him running, and he's a bit of an underdog. Uh, you know, the, the team to beat in LMP1 is Toyota. They have a, they won uh, last year. They've, uh, they're really a, a top tier program. Now, anybody who knows motorsports and whether it's, you know, getting from you know, zero to a thousand feet down the track or NASCAR, whatever the case is, it's a very physical sport. Um, when I talk to, when I talk to drag racers and they say they're, you know, there's, you know, six, you know, six G's of force and then a negative eight when they, when the chutes open or whether it's, you know, just being in a, in a NASCAR driving for hours, this has got to be incredibly physically demanding. Totally. Um, it, it is because of the time involved, right? 24 hours. Now, it's not one driver for 24 right. hours. So it's, it's three drivers. And uh, my understanding of the rules, I'm, they might have changed. I, I was up on these, I think, a couple of years ago. No driver can do longer than, I think, uh, two stints. And I think a stint is uh, two hours behind the wheel. So a driver can do a max of four hours, I believe, before he has to come out and take a break and, and one of the other drivers uh, goes in. Um, the, what I've heard though from the drivers is that because the race is so long and, and these, are, these are not like uh, Formula One cars which are open cockpit, right. these are closed uh, cars and in the, the, uh, the other classes, they're, they're actually production cars. So there's some Ferraris, there's some Porsches and some Aston Martins, so, so some road going cars. They actually make them to be uh, as comfortable as possible because the, the drive is so long. So if you were really fighting the vehicle the entire time, you'd be exhausted. And it's not in the best interest of the team if the driver is, is, is you know, just, just getting annihilated behind the wheel. They have to be some level of comfort uh, as well as speed. And then of course, reliability to go the distance. I don't even want to sit in an airplane for five hours, you know, let alone, let alone behind the wheel of a car for that long. Um, doing that doing that kind of driving and knowing how crucial every move is because it still is you know man, no matter how you look at it it still is racing and you're still competitive and i can i can even imagine that a driver when they take a break maybe physically they're resting a little bit but mentally i'm sure they're not right uh yeah you know you, you'll see i I've, I've been to the race uh twice and i've, I've been able to have the, the luxury of hanging out in the uh in the pits and you see when these guys come out, you know, they're, they're usually drenched with sweat, they're exhausted and uh, they, they have to hop out and go lay down on a cot somewhere and uh, get as much sleep as they can. And when they wake up, 
you know, they're back into the car, hopefully, or sometimes they wake up and they find, they found out that their teammate wrecked the car and their, their race is over. But it's, uh, it's, it's very stressful. And at the end of the race, you can see the relief is sort of, uh, is, is evident, not just on the, um, on the drivers, but on the teams. Uh, when you go into the pits, like, you know, two, three, four in the morning, you'll see all the mechanics like stretched out on cots, like in front of, a big TV screen where the race is being broadcast because, uh, and just waiting for the next, uh, the, the next uh, pitch change. Speaking of broadcast, where can people watch, uh, watch oh, this race? I'm glad you asked. Uh, <laughs> the entire 2020 Le Mans 24 is available on the Motor Trend app, which you can find in the app store. Um, or you can, Watch it if you have Motor Trend TV, if you're one of our cable TV subscribers, uh, we'll be broadcasting it over the weekend. Uh, but the app really is the place to be because we have the practice sessions, we have the qualifying sessions, and we have a really cool uh, uh, multiple views. You can get six different views from six different cars during the race, basically dash cams that you can, uh, you can move between, as well as the standard broadcast with some great color commentary. And uh, you know if you don't have the app, uh, and you're interested, you should know it's available on iPhone, iPad, Android, uh, Apple TV, Roku, Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire TV, and of course, Xbox. So basically any way you want to watch it, including on, on the web, uh, once, you, once you're a subscriber, uh, we got you covered. Yeah, it, it, so it sounds great. And the idea that you have those alternative views where you're really now you're really more as if you're more immersed in the race which which certainly must bring up the excitement level totally you're more engaged and i know a lot of people a lot of racing purists um they would really wish sometimes the guys would stop talking and just let me listen to the car or see what's going on and this allows you that option you can just basically be fully immersed in it um i love this race partially because it is so wild to me that uh, it, it's early in the morning for us in, in America. You wake up, and unless you're a super early riser, they're generally already started. And then you go to sleep that day, and you wake up the next day, and again, they're, they're probably still going or they're doing the podium uh, ceremony. It is just, you can, you can kind of jump back to it and check out what's happened or catch some recaps and see all the action. So as a spectator, you need to rest up for the race. Absolutely. Uh, good idea to get, to get a good night's sleep uh, the night before. Friday night, get up early. Uh, the start is the most dramatic thing. So uh, you, you, you kind of want to see how, how all these vehicles get going. And then, you know, get a feel for it and then go about your day and come back and check in. Uh, the app lets you do that, whether you're on your phone or whether you're at home and watching it on, on your, your, you know, your TV or, or your Chromecast uh, and just, just stay with it. It's, uh, it's awesome. That, that's a good point. You could be out there and, um, you know, you you know, you want to go out and you want to wax your car, you can bring your iPad outside with you, keep up with the race while you're out there tinkering around with your car. Totally. You can have it with you on your phone and, and you can, you can, you know, cast it anywhere or put it onto your Apple TV. Yep. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's flexibility, right? I mean, everyone, that's all it is these days. It's, it's about the mobile phone and about what you want to consume on it. So Absolutely. Motor Trend app is where it's at. All right. So one more time, Motor Trend TV, Motor Trend the app, uh, pretty much, the whole weekend, right? Totally. Yeah, you can find the Motor Trend app in the, of course, the Apple Store or Android, wherever you are familiar down, downloading your apps. It's only uh, $2 a month. Again, you get this live viewing experience. Uh, you can also watch it on Motor Trend uh, TV. If you're a cable subscriber, we'd, happy to, we'd be happy to have you there. And uh, yeah, it's, it should be one for the ages. I think people are very excited that, that Le Mans is back uh, in full. Uh, even though spectators aren't there. So you can be one of the millions of fans world, uh, worldwide that are tuning in. And it's not Le Mans. No, it's not Le, yeah. it's not Le Mans. Le Mans. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, Ed, thanks for taking some time out of your day. And uh, uh, we'll uh, look forward to uh, joining you in the race over the weekend. Awesome. Thank you so much. Glad to be All here. All right. Take care. Thanks.